guys. Amen. And that's a good thing. Guys, as the Lord allows or leads, I'm, I'm going to be in the book of, of Romans. And I'm going to look at a few verses of Scripture, starting at Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Romans chapter 11, and I'll begin my reading at verse 25. If you do have your phone, please make sure they are on vibrate. <laughs> Romans 11, and I'll again be reading my uh, uh, introductory scriptures coming starting at verse 25. If you're with me, please say amen. 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 And Paul writes here, he says, For I would not, brethren, page sticking, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. He says, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is having to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come. And listen, Paul has been talking about this for a little bit in his book. And he's saying that, look, Israel is blind, but they're going to one day come to faith in Christ, that he's not forgotten them. And God right now has turned his attention toward the Gentiles. He says in verse 26, and, and so all Israel will be saved. And look, just so that we're clear about what he's saying here, he's not saying all the Jews are going to be saved from now and all the way until at the end. But he is saying that all Israel who will be saved or should be saved, they're going to come to faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, again, he says, for all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion, it said, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And, and indeed, because they were faulty, they were going the way they wanted to go. And, and listen, God had to just turn away from them for a bit, but he's not forgotten them. And, and he's saying he's coming back to them. In verse 27, he says, and for this is my covenant unto them, which I shall take away their sins. And God made that promise and is making that promise and is still working on that nation. He says in verse 28, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. And listen, of course, talking about the patriarchs, in particular uh, Abraham and our faith has come from him. He is our earthly father of faith. He goes on in, in verse uh, 29, and for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In, in other words, whatever he says, he's going to do. And, and by the way, that's on the good side, but it's also on the not so good side. If you're not right with him, he promises you leave here without him, you're going to hell. Amen. No other way to say it. He says in verse 34, for ye in time past have not believed God, yet now have, but he says yet, have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. He goes on, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may obtain mercy. And listen, God showed us mercy. In fact, he did not give us what we deserve, which is hell, and his grace ushered us in, and he'll do the same thing with them as well. Verse 32, he says, for God has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. He goes on, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And, and guys, look, you'll look at a verse of scripture, you'll see it, and, and the Holy Spirit will give you enlightenment on it, and you'll say, bing, the light bulb goes off, and you say, oh man, I got it. But man, that's only the beginning of you getting it because it oh so much deeper than that. How unsearchable are his ways. And just like what well, just as soon as you think you know something, God's going to help you to understand that you really don't know all you think you know. He goes on, verse 34. For who had known the mind of the Lord, or who had been his counselor, or who had first given to him that it should be recompensed unto him again. In other words, he's saying anybody who fits that bill, stand up and be counted. And nobody better stand up. In verse 36, he says, For of him and through him and to him are all things whom be glory <laughs> forever. And Paul ends chapter 11 with a hearty amen. And guys, if we're able to do anything, 
is only because of the grace of God and to him be all the glory. And guys, I would ask that you be prayerful with me as I preach around the subject, doing ministry God's way. And Father, as we dive deeper into this great book, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll first hide me behind your cross. And mm. Father God, for these words that I'm going to uh, study through that, Lord, you've given them to me for this congregation. And Lord, I'm going to preach them as best I can in, in the understanding and information that you've given me. But Father, I can't make anyone believe and Father surely can't place them in no one's heart. So I pray that as they leave their mouth, my mouth, and Father God, even minister to me and place them in our spirit, man, where they would do the most good. Lord, it might be somebody who's slacking and, and they need to know they need to stop if they're a child of God. Somebody might be unsaved, Father God. Allow these verses to find that place in their heart that will bring them to salvation. For someone who's seeking wisdom or, or maybe answer prayer or, or, or God, I don't know, but whatever it is, do with your truth as you see fit as we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. amen. And amen. Chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Very familiar passages of scripture, very familiar meaning of scripture, and as we go through this, I pray God will speak to your heart as well. Paul goes on in chapter 12, verse 1, he says, I be, are you with me? Say amen. amen. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. So, it, so he's not talking about his Jewish brethren, he, he's talking about believers. Mm -hmm. It says, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, and listen, since we're alive in Christ, he's saying we need to present ourselves to Christ. And he goes on, he says, a uh, 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 living sacrifice. He says, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And God, we could probably care about just on this one verse here. He's saying that we come to the Lord, that we wake up in the morning, we come to the Lord, and, and look, we have plans, we got things we want to do. I mapped this out, I, I got this on my calendar, I'm supposed to do this today, but if God has something else in mind for you, he has to have the right to change your direction. And, and listen, he does that. And he does that with me. I know he does it with you as well. But sometimes we look at our calendar and, and listen, we see what's on our calendar as more important than what God wants us to do. I was slated to come to Men in Motion today to speak. I had my sermon ready, caught, and ready to fire it off. And, and, and God had the audacity to say to me, Brother Ralph, we're not going to preach that today. Yeah, we're, we're going to preach this today. Yeah. And, and so my, my conversation, with, of course, was real short with the Lord. I'm, I'm like, but Lord, I prepared this, and, and I got notes here, and, and I did. He said, I, I, I never asked you what, what, what you want to do. Never ask me. He says, you go and preach what I tell you to preach. And, and guys, that's what I'm doing. He works that out. Come on. And I got to have him, let him have his way as opposed to me having my way. He says in verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And by the way, I don't just come at God and give him what I want him to have. It's got to be right. Otherwise, he's not going to receive it. He says, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the least I can do my reasonable service. He says, and be not conformed to this world. And guys, look, we see, especially during the political season that we're in right now, and the world comes up with this and comes up with that. And, and I dare say, man, if you listen to that stuff long enough, you might say, well, you know, that seems like it might be okay. But, but man, anytime the pundits or anytime those that are speaking against God come up with some, some mindsets that's against God, I can't receive that. In fact, I trash it. I can't fool with it. I watch a lot of shows on TV, and what I find is that now I gotta watch a lot of old shows. Yeah, that's right. Because there's so much, man. You're watching a, a, a TV show, and, mm -hmm. and, and and it seems like it's gonna be a good one, and, and, and it's dramatic, and everything is going on. And next, you think you know, here come two men holding hands, and they talking about that's my husband. Mm -hmm. 
And listen, if you keep watching that kind of thing, if they keep barraging you with it, you very well might allow them to conform you to say that it's okay. And God says it is not. And look, verse 2 says, it, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye, look, transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove. In other words, show, is going to show in your walk, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? And I love what he's saying. He said, by the renewing of your mind. And guys, and I shared this before. If you sleep with this Bible under your pillow, that osmosis thing ain't going to work. It's not getting up there. It, it really is. You, you, you need to get in his book. And, and even when you get in his book, you need to say, Lord, what does that mean? And let him renew your mind. And guess what? You read it today, it's going to mean one thing. You read it tomorrow, it's going to mean the other, something else. Or, or it's going to mean the same thing, but even something added. And every time you read it, it's going to renew your mind. And, and guess what? If your mind is renewed, when you're out and about among folk, and look, somebody comes along and wants you to do something contrary to what you just read, that, that, that scripture, that truth, it went into your mind, it went down to your heart, and it will be part of your walk and you'll say no I can't go that way because oh, he just renewed me and look I believe God 100% I gotta go his way he saved me he blessed me he gave me eternal life and a home in heaven look it don't mean I'm gonna be on this side forever but it does mean I'll be with him forever and it starts right here on this side and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There are some folk that knew me when, man, back in the day. And they look at me now, and they talk to me now, and they say, man, I don't even recognize you. You look so different. And I'll say something like, uh, well, I'm older. They say, no, it's not that. There's something different. And listen, it's not just what I'm saying to them. It's part of my being. And I've been conformed and transformed to the way of the Lord. And he's taken, though I still have a sin nature, he's taken that and made it null and void mm -hmm. because I now belong to him. He says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul goes on, verse three, he says, for, for I say through the grace given unto me, and listen, he knows, Paul knows, I, I was heavy in the flesh. I'm not heavy in the flesh no more. God's grace opened the door for me to get some real information, some real truth. It said, every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, to think, it said, but, but to think soberly. And by the way, he's talking about under God's control and no longer under my control. And by the way, no other substance control either. He says, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And, and I get it, man. We're all at different places, but we all ought to be growing in grace. How, how I was last week, man, I, I should be a little further along this week. And, and how I was last week, last year, I ought to be a little further along. And, and, and listen, it's not that I'm marking myself with you, but I'm doing what God has called me to do. And he's growing me and teaching me and grooming me, not so my head will swell up and I can sit back and say, man, look at all the knowledge I got so that I can walk in this. And somebody might see Brother Ralph and they very well might say, man, I used to to know that guy, but I don't know him no more. Hey, how did you get to be like you are and I can tell him about a man? Mm -hmm. The God man, Christ Jesus, and, and because of him, I'm now new and I've been renewed and I have been blessed by the best mm -hmm. to follow him. He says, for as we have, verse 4, many members in one body, and all the members have not, he says, the same office. And listen, it makes sense. And, and listen, he's kind of showing us even how the human body is. That's how the body of Christ is. He says, so we being many are one body in Christ. And everyone members of one another. 
And, and listen, so just like the human body, all of my parts, they belong to the body, but they all have a different office. And especially as I get older, some of the offices are getting weak. So the other offices got to come along and, and, and help me out. But, but he's saying we're one, even though we are many. Because we're rooted and grounded in the head, who is Christ Jesus, our Lord. He, say, he goes on, and he's talking about our giftedness here, guys. And by the way, if you're in Christ, I mean surely saved, then he has given you at least one Absolutely. spiritual gift. Absolutely. And, and if you really want to know what it is, you need to get together with him. There are some aids that can help you along in that, but you need to get together with him. And ask him what it is he would have you to do in this kingdom. And because I know folk that have been quote unquote saved for quite some time. And they still don't know where God would have them to be. God will let you. The Lord will let you know where he wants you. And, and listen, it, it, it won't be something that you were able to do when, when before uh, prior to salvation. Even though he can enhance that. But generally, even for me, man, I, I, I was shy. And, and believe it or not, I still am. And I sit back in the background. I never want to be in front of nobody. And even though I've been doing this for years, every time I got to stand before you guys or anybody else, I am nervous as a hot a cat on a hot tin roof. Yes, sir. But I open my mouth. I said, because God, you said you were going to fill it. And I quote his word. He gives me understanding of his word. And it comes out in a way. And I sit back sometimes and look at my video. And I say, man, how did I do that? <laughs> and then I got to give God the glory Absolutely. because I know it's because of him he says in verse 6 having then in fact verse 5 so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members of one another he says having then gives differing according to the grace that is given unto us and again given by God whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. And listen, he's not talking about one of them phony prophets that are going to say, God's speaking now, and I'm going to get, no. He's talking about his word, and he's talking about understanding and dissecting and giving you a true word from him, and his prophecy is not going to go contrary to what he has already spoken. Never will. He says, or in ministry, let us wait on our ministering. And, and listen, from the moment he saved me, God told me I was going to preach. He told me that. But I was nowhere long, uh, nowhere near ready to preach. Because I didn't even know what preaching was. Hmm. I just got in by the grace of God. And it took years and years and years. But guess what? Because I knew that that's what he called me to do, on a few occasions I tried to make that happen. He called me to preach. I'm going to set up my own ministry and I'm going to preach. And, and by the way, I don't need to tell you, it didn't go too well. <laughs> and, and listen, I had to end up waiting on him, which we ought to do anyway. But when he opened the door, there was no issue. There was no trying to make it happen. It happened because he had already ordained it. But he says here on ministry, wait on our ministering or ministry, and listen, doesn't necessarily mean a preaching ministry, but whatever he's called you to do, serve or whatever, wait on him, or he that teaches on teaching, God will set up the scenario and work that thing out, man, and it will literally blow your mind. Mm -hmm. Or he that exhorted on exaltation, and this is one of the gifts that my wife has, and, and, and man, she encourages folks, she, she encourages me. And, look, and she always kind of did that, but now she's encouraging or exhorting with truth. Amen. Before she was exhorting or encouraging what, what mama said or what her experiences was, but once she learned God's word, then she came with truth, and that made it effective. Amen. And God did that. He that gave it, let him do it with simplicity. And I shared before him, he's a friend of mine, he, he has this gift of giving, and, and he always, is, he'll give you his shoes off his feet. Mm -hmm. Because he knows God is the one, the provider, and he always provides for him another pair. Mm -hmm. I was buying a house one time, I shared this before, and, and I needed $5,000. And he said, oh, I'll give it to you. So he did, I mean, just flippantly said he'd give it to me. 
So it came to that time, it was like the day before, and, and I said, Gene, um, you know you told me you were going to give me five grand? He said, oh yeah, I forgot all about it. Pull out an envelope and give it to me. It had it in his pocket all along. Yeah. And, and listen, years later, I was paying him back drips and dribbles, and, and, and finally I told him, I said, Gene, look, I haven't forgotten about your money, man. I said, I'm just struggling right now. I can't, can't give it to y'all. And he said, what money? <laughs> I said, you know you gave, gave me the five grand for the house. He said, well, I'm going to settle this once and for all. He says, you don't owe me nothing. We're straight. Yeah. And just like that, man, because he had that gift, and the Lord blessed him with that, and he just freely gives. And when God has gifted you, you don't mind using your gift for God's purposes. Amen? Amen. He says, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. In other words, if you're going to be a leader in God's church, you got to have that stick to it in this. You don't do it today, and, and, and man, nobody clapped for me. I ain't going back to that place. Man, nah, nah. God said go. God said speak or preach or serve, and whether they like you or not, that's got nothing to do with it. God loves you. He sent you. Do what he told you to do. Amen. He said present your body a living sacrifice, and you have been, hallelujah, blessed of the best to serve him and be given that gift, and we don't do it for accolades of men. But we do it to the praise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Now, I haven't had this gift as well. And one thing about this mercy show a gift is that you have a tendency to really get knee deep in, in the problems of someone else. And folk will be telling me about somebody that died or something they're hurting about it. And before you know it, man, their pain literally is my pain. Yep. And I'll begin to cry with them. And listen, if I'm not careful, I'll try to be Christ to them and try to fix them. When all God told me to do was to console them, be a mercy shower, let them know I love them, I feel their pain, and pray for them. Because I can't fix Brother Ralph. How am I going to fix you? And then they walk around and, man, it was so good talking to you. And they skipping off into the, the sunset. And I'm walking around with all, all down in the dumps because I held on to what they gave me. And I was supposed to give it back to the Lord and let him fix it. I am not the one that died for anybody's sins. Mm -hmm. And since Christ did it, there's no sense in me trying to do it as well. Because he did it the best. And what he did stuck. And he simply made me to go to them and be appreciative of them and try to bless them and, and, and let them know that we love you, but let them know fully that Christ loves you the most. He says in verse 9, let love be without dissimulation. That's a word in the King James. It simply means hypocrisy. And, and guys, you know how that goes sometimes. That somebody's come, oh man, I ain't seen you in so long. I love you. As soon as they walk away, man, I can't stand that dude. <laughs> Either you do or you don't, man. Let, be honest about whatever it is. But he said, let love be real. Let love be without dissimulation. He says, abhor, a word that means hate, that which is, that which is uh, evil. He says, cleave, meaning to stick to that which is good. And Christ says, only my Father is good. So we stick to the things that are godly. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. And, and listen, that brotherly love, we, that, that phileo love that in the Greek word, and, and what we know is that that love of uh, the city of Philadelphia, which kind of used to be like that, there ain't too much brotherly love going on there right now. I was born and raised there. He said, but, but be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, he said, preferring one another. And, and look, he's talking about believers actually wanting to be around other people. Believers. I had somebody tell me one time, he said, man, when you worship, you should want to be worshiping with your own kind. That's what he told me. And he was speaking about the skin color. He's wrong. And, and, and what I told him, now, now I told him he right. 
I said, you're, you're right. I should be wanting to minister with my own kind. My own kind that love Jesus Christ. And that much matter what color they are. If they love Jesus, then they're my own kind. And you need to understand that. Amen. Yeah. Because if you love the Lord, guess what? Mm -hmm. You're my brother. Yeah. And if I love the Lord, I'm your brother. And, and listen, I'm going to be with you through thick and thin. And, and there are those that are not so right, that are not so uh, 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 actually spiritual, truly spiritual. And, and listen, things will get thick and, and they'll get thin. But a brother, hallelujah, like Christ Jesus, he sticks closest to her than any brother. And look, if you got issues and I can help, then I'm there with you. And if you know Christ... We will be together in eternity, forever. Mm -hmm. So we start on this side, getting right with one another. And we start on this side, preferring one another. Man, I, I, being an evangelist, I'm, I, I don't have a big issue with being around folk that are unsaved because I'm going to give them a double dose of Jesus yeah. anyhow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. But in regard to just uh, fellowshipping around what they're doing, Man, give me some believers, man. Yeah. And listen, you guys are from all walks of life, You're from all places. And, and, and no, we don't think exactly alike. We don't do everything exactly alike. We, we didn't want to all raise the same. We eat some of the same food, some of the food you like, I don't like. But we are all in Christ. And we all, hallelujah, have God as our Father through the finished works of Jesus Christ. And that makes us eternally Amen. brothers in Christ. Amen. Yeah. And for that, I love him. For years, man, all my life, most of my adult life, trying to figure out where I fit in. Because I didn't hate nobody, never heard, hated nobody. And, and, and listen, my, my parents didn't raise me to hate nobody. And then one day the Lord came along and happened to save me. And he told me he loved me. And he said, Brother Ralph, I'll, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That I'll provide for you according to my riches. I'm not asking you for nothing in glory. And then finally, got saved at 36 years old. Hmm. I said, Lord, you finally gave me a home. Yes. You finally showed me where I fit. And man, it's been him and me ever since. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, some brothers like you all along the way. Mm -hmm. And listen, we, 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 all, all my life, I've been, I've been giving folk hell over different various things, and God gave me some truth, and now I can now give them heaven as opposed to hell, so maybe they can actually learn of him and be my brother as well. And God did that mm -hmm. and put me in a place that I can now call home. He says in verse 10, be kindly affectionate one to another. He says, with brotherly love, in honor of preferring one another, not slothful in business. In other words, you're going to do something, man, do it. Do it right. Mm -hmm. You see those sloths and, and, and they move like this, man, and, and they're going so slow. And you see a lot of workers out there, they working just like that, barely moving, not slothful in business. He says, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So guess what? He started off telling us that, that we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. And here he's saying that we're serving the Lord and we need to serve him with everything we got. I ask the question I always ask, it, does anybody know if they're going to be here tomorrow? No. And because you don't, because he is giving you the day, give him all you got today. And look, even if you burn yourself out, it's okay, because you'll lay down and you'll wake up, or maybe you won't, and then you'll be in heaven, and all this will be over. Paul said to live as Christ, I'm going to serve him with everything I got, and if I die, I is gain. Glory. And you wake up, if you wake up still on this side, and you say, Lord... Here we go again. Let's give the folk I'm going to meet on this day. Help me to give them heaven. Because I've been giving them hell all my life. <laughs> and Father, please bless me to be a blessing. He says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. And by the way, hope 
not in ourselves or what we can do, but hope in the finished works of Jesus Christ and what he has already done. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Mm. And guys, we go through some things in this life. We all know that. We got a whole prayer list of folk that are going through something. He says, wait on him. Be patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And listen, your first ad or your first thing that when something goes wrong should be to go to him in prayer. He said, distributing to the necess necessity of the saints, giving the hospitality. In other words, being hospitable to one another. And by the way, my mother taught me one thing that was true, and that is it don't cost you anything to be nice. Mm. It really don't. He said, bless them with persecute you. Bless and curse not. And, and look, we don't want to hear that, but God says Your, my spirit's in you, and through me, you can do that. He said, be able to um, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend, it says, to men of low estate. In other words, man, there's some folk that might be lower on the totem pole of life than you. And we ought to bow down and meet them where they live. Because get but for the grace of God go I. Uh -huh. And again, don't cost you nothing. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense no man, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. In other words, God, it's time to grow up and leave, turn loose that childish mesh that we have grown up with. He says, if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. And Paul says in verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And, and by the way, Paul's saying he's not saying that he's going to repay. He's not saying that we're going to repay. That if somebody does something to God's children, he's going to take care of them. So all we got to do is simply give them to him and move out <laughs> of the way. And I get it. Harder said or easier said than done. But it is possible. And with the Lord in your heart, that's the only way that it can be possible. Amen? Amen. Amen. This topic of this little sermon, simply put, was doing ministry God's way. Mm. And as believers in Christ, I think it's time that we start to put that into practice. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this time. Of ministry, Father God, this time of fellowship, this time of looking into your word of truth. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll touch and bless each and every man that's here. And Father God, even reiterate our prayer list and, and Father God, touch them and bless them in a mighty and a special way as well. If there's anyone that does not know you in the pardon of their sin, I pray, Father God, that right here and right now that you have blessed their heart and given them some information that they can look unto Jesus, who's the author and finisher of all those who have faith. Bless them with salvation. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you as we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys and thank you.